Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at the most recent price action and what we'd expect to happen next. As I get into the video, if you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, check it out guys, linked in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24-7. It's the first place that we go to to notify you of everything that's going on in the crypto space so keep a finger on the pulse of crypto by joining us down in discord okay let's jump down into this bitcoin paired up with usdt on the hourly chart and binance is the data source now yesterday i was talking about a potential move upwards towards our 23,600 and 23,700. clearly i was wrong on that one so my apologies there and um, we can actually see a more of a break to the downside here so i drew this out on our live stream this morning uh, you can see that we did actually revisit recently down to the demand zone this is the area that we we're talking about probably three or four days ago around Monday, I think it was, uh, where we're talking about this move down here. Obviously, we thought we were going to move up before we came down, but you know, anyway, we ended up in the demand zone. From here, we can see that we're bouncing on up, and I still expect us to push up just a fraction further before we continue our move to the downside. You can see from the stochastic RSI that we're oversold on the daily, we're oversold on the eight hour, and we're oversold on the four hour, but we've still got some room here on our one hour chart to drop down. So I expect a bit of a move down before we surge on up in a B wave movement, um, and then we can talk about moving moving down in another, another kind of three or five wave structure, taking us down to where I believe will be between 21,500 and 21,800. Uh, and as you can kind of see that structure then from the very top here, big ABC structure with all the corrective nonsense in the middle. You can see the higher highs and the higher lows and all this kind of breaking down from here. Um, so we can acknowledge that we are having now in fact come down outside of that um, kind of, you know, expanding uh, structure. So this looks like we are now finally kind of correcting, um, but we're in the very early stages of it. Nothing would happen in a straight line or anything like that either. So it, the other thing I've got to bear in mind here is we can come right the way back up into these highs while still being inside this market structure of going down lower okay so just kind of bear that in mind this isn't going to go in straight lines we don't go straight down we don't go straight up um not unless of course you know the dxy is is, is, is driving that um but just bear in mind that at the moment what we have here under the elliott wave structures and if you want to know more about this uh, check out cheeky school linked in the description down below but under these structures it looks like a 3-3 move uh, with a potential 3-3-5 or 3-3-3 coming in down at the bottom here. So it's a, a WXY technically, but I'm just using ABC for simplicity of communicating uh, the structures across on YouTube. Now, when this completes down in this low range, do expect a bigger bounce upwards. And if we reflect on some of these key areas of resistance right here, for example, the 23,300, 23,500, you can see we had consolidation. We recently visited this high area and we um, we actually got rejected from it. Okay, so that's gonna be interesting to keep a close eye on, uh, on that particular area just there. As long with our slightly higher range as well. I'll just go ahead and drag these across just a fraction so we can keep these uh, up to date with our expectations on the lower side. So if we were to bounce up anywhere, yeah, my first kind of thoughts are going to be let's review these areas of consolidation. Around, uh, you know, we've actually got quite a bit of resistance as well uh, around the 22.8 and, and all that kind of stuff. So Bear in mind, uh, we have got a lot of uh, resistances to kind of work our way through. Now, if I throw in the HTF liquidity, you can see we haven't really got terribly too much now uh, in this range. You can see there isn't a lot here to kind of think about at the moment. So we're going to have to encourage some long positions. And you can also notice um, that if I actually bring in the order blocks, are the order blocks here? Yeah, right here. Um, you can see that order blocks are incredibly close to price action right now. So you're not really needing to come down this low right away. Uh, I think that's why it's going to take some time. You can, of course, see the short positions that have been stacking up here. And so a revisit into these areas is going to be quite interesting, along with this red sell order block right up here as well. Uh, and it's right in that twenty-four to twenty-five thousand dollar level. I still think that's technically possible, and um, so we'll keep an eye on it um, overall. So, and um, that's on the hourly chart, right? So our hourly chart is um, is basically looking like we have to have a small drop down today, probably push up uh, on the four, eight and daily charts over the weekend and and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, maybe drop back down next week and all that. Now, as we kind of come up into our weekly chart, we can see that the 200 EMA is where we've been rejected from. Um, and, you know, that remains very much true right now. Um, so we want to be a little bit cautious uh, with thinking that we're going to go to the moon. We can probably wick up here. That's fine. You've got this heavy resistance right in the 24 to $25,000 level. Um, you can see that we came 
and close to kind of coming into that range. You can see there's a lot of resistance going to be in that area. Um, but we are finding support on this previous area of resistance at the moment, okay? And that is 21,000. Uh, 800 to 22,800. You can kind of see this yellow block right in here. Uh, this is acting as our support level at the moment. Below that, of course, we do have our next range of 20 to 21K. And um, that's right in there. And then there isn't really totally too much uh, until we come back down into these lows, which I do think is something that we do have to test. More specifically around that $18,600 level, which is a part of our Wyckoff accumulation pattern. Not that I'm overly fond of the pattern. You know, it is what it is. It's either going to play out or it's not going to play out. Um, but at the moment, I, you know, we are looking for a retracement down towards 18626 according to the Wyckoff accumulation pattern. And the fact that we have not entered into phase C just yet. Okay, there's two patterns here. One has a spring event. One does not have a spring event so you know you can kind of see how that's going to gravitate towards wherever the money is wherever the liquidity is that's the one that is uh, going to get followed now if i come back up into our hourly and just make this the daily chart here i want to talk about golden crosses lots of noise about golden crosses um essentially here if you depending on the different types because there's so many different ways you can draw these out right and um, you've got the 50 ema above the uh, crossing above the 200 ema you've got the um 50 SMA crossing above the 200 SMA. You've then got a 21 EMA crossing above a 200 SMA uh, and so forth, right? Lots of var different variations kind of get you to different results. Uh, now, essentially here, if we just take a, a simple moving average of 50 and a simple moving average of 200, uh, the cross, the golden cross would have actually have occurred over here on the 11th of January, which on the 11th of January, what did we see? Well, we saw significant growth, uh, which is why you see that smaller time average movement moving up higher and it's the same kind of concept when you look at other kind of time frames as well or other kind of indicators if we were to take a um, let's take this one here uh, this red line this red line is currently a 50 EMA but if I make it a 21 EMA um, and bring that down let that adjust you can also see that we had that cross uh, right around here early January um, so again we're not really seeing uh, a need to kind of think about a, go a golden cross happening right this second, right? Um, like I said, it all depends on which variations of golden cross you want to follow. Uh, like at the end of the day, they all they are is a, a moving average, right? It only shows you the price action that's already passed. Um, and obviously, you know, retail investors will sometimes kind of get themselves uh, caught up in in the kind of the terminology, thinking things are more bullish than they maybe are, um, or you know, feeling like they're going to get carried away because you know, a death cross is really bearish, right? It's really negative, right? And you hear this time and time again uh, these usually these terms of golden crosses is, is designed by the media to kind of get you really kind of positive and pumping up and um, feel like you're going to the moon and then of course they'll spin the the the, the opposite which is a death cross on you uh, telling you that things are crashing down uh, massively but what they're really doing is these crosses are only really showing you uh, that short-term movements are now higher uh, than your longer term movements, which we don't need moving averages to tell us that Bitcoin's price has moved up uh, significantly, right? So we don't need a 21 day average or a 50 uh, day average to tell us that the price action of, of Bitcoin has moved up, right? So just bear in mind that yes, there's going to be some overreactions, emotional retailers probably reacting to things. But when we actually take a look at it from like, the 50 crossing over 200, that happened in January. It's not happening in February. Uh, and of course, if you want to drop it down to a 15 EMA across a let's say 50 uh, SMA or MA or or 200 MA or whatever, right? Um, you can adjust it. You can look for them. You can find them. You can you know make whatever short-term line cross over any longer-term line that you want. Um, but essentially, we kind of need to know that actually the market structure here is telling us that we're reaching a plateau. Okay, now I still think there's potential for an upward move. I'm not going to say that there isn't. Um, but we don't want to be fooling ourselves into thinking there's something more important going on here. Now, if I bring up our wallet counts, which we spoke about this morning, we can see the retail or dumb money essentially uh, coming in, right? So this is basically, and I don't want to sound like it sounds really bad when I say dumb money, but what I mean by this and what the terms are essentially is small amounts of money is classified as dumb money, which is historically speaking is retail money, okay? So you not really have enough capital um, to kind of move markets significantly, whereas smart money is institutional grade money, uh, billions of dollars moving around and all that kind of stuff, right? So dumb money, smart money is kind of the terms. Now, 
And on the kind of retail side of things, or the dumb money side of things, we can see it being pumped up a little bit on these wallets, but there's nothing major um, across the board there. And we can, of course, see and acknowledge that, you know, smart money essentially is is coming out of their positions uh, or de-risking as, as such. So and we kind of see this time and time again. Uh, so you can see here that the sharks, which are our, um, I guess, professional level traders is the best way of kind of articulating them from their price action. They normally follow it. We saw um, in December that they decided that they were going to deviate away from price action right they pumped up their positions massively at the time i was very confused thinking okay are they either making a mistake here or they know something that was coming and of course you know we see a massive surge in price right so they clearly made a really good call here to pump up that position before the price action of btc actually skyrocketed now of course bitcoin's price is high what are they doing? Well, they're taking their profits now, okay? And we can kind of see that in there. We can also see that the whales, this is the over 1,000 Bitcoin wallets, they continue to go down. There's nothing uh, going on here. We hit new lower lows um, on wallet counts on the 1st of February. We can see that right there, 2,027. Um, and if I actually come up into this one, uh, over here on the actual low, okay, wallets were at 2,103, okay, so, so tell me this, right, if uh, if the bottom is in, okay, as many people believe or seem to be believing, then essentially a lot of these uh, positions were, were coming out, right? people were selling their, their Bitcoin and, and losing uh, more than a 1,000 Bitcoin in their wallet um, since the 10th of November 2022 and uh, we can kind of see that right in there right and we can see the wallet counts going down and we hit a new lower low in these wallet counts at 2027 here on the 1st of February so they continue to sell off their positions they're not continuing to kind of accumulate there's no accumulation here uh, going on but what we are seeing and we are witnessing here is a continued effort to come out of their positions and they're grabbing whatever liquidity they can uh, to do so now in relation to this, we can obviously take a look at the larger 10,000 BTC wallets, and we can see that during the bear market, they accumulate like they would normally. Um, but recently, they've been coming out of their positions as well, right? And we can see that right in here as well. So not seriously giving me any faith that, you know, Bitcoin's going to the moon when big money, smart money is not really backing the positions uh, at the moment. So... Uh, Caution is, is kind of the word. And let me know in the comments down below, have you been taking profits um, on on your kind of Bitcoin holdings or your altcoins as the prices have moved up? Because I do think this is a short term move to the upside um, with a long term move to the downside. I think that's indicated within the wallet counts of who's buying and who's selling because this is a some zero game. If someone is buying, someone is selling. And if retail is buying, well, unfortunately, institutions are selling. And institutional money is what's going to move this up into significant levels. And until then, I think retail are going to be left holding their bags waiting uh, to basically just look for the opportunity to sell so in my opinion i think the retest of 18k is going to be something that we have to see um that fire that lines up nicely with the wyckoff pattern but you know that is what it is um i don't know how long it's going to take to play out we could move up to 25k before we move down that's equally possible um, one of the things i do know is we're not in a trend structure here we're in a corrective structure and um, so again we're not looking at anything here thinking that we're going to the moon under these particular structures uh, that we see on btc so a correction down has to happen whether a new lower low is something that we see uh, i'll leave that for you guys to decide i personally do think we end up seeing a new lower low purely because um the institutional players the smart money hasn't been back in the recent low um and so so yeah, they've been selling that one. So therefore, I do think there's a high likelihood that the price has to go down lower in order to initiate uh, retailers to sell, panic sell, um, and then see that transfer of wealth between the dumb money and the smart money and all that kind of wonderful stuff. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I will wrap up right there. If you found it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. With all that said, done out of the way. I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.